Hi everyone, this is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming, and today I'm reviewing the roguelike game known as Curious Expedition, a game that really has opened my eyes to new ideas in history. Ideas like Harriet Tubman leading expeditionary forces into the wilds of Australia to discover new ways platypi can kill you, or Aleister Crowley traveling the badlands of East Asia searching for the perfect camel saddle. This is basically Oregon Trail plus Tom Cruise's life story, as you explore the world doing incredibly stupid things, all in a desperate bid to find a golden pyramid of knowledge and become famous. Let's see if we can all be Tom Cruise, or sadly, do we all just end up being goose? As always, this review is caffeinated, which means fueled by the power of Colombian drug lords and piped into your echo chambers of arcane knowledge at the speed of rabbit sex. Let's get to it. Graphics are up first. Like many roguelike games, Curious Expedition harkens back to the Ultima days and the days of Xiphus on Apple II and when pixels weren't counted, they were counted on. However, in a strange way, it's that rough and hewn look to these games that give them their character, reminding you that not only dysentery, but possibly cutting yourself on a sharp pixel could end up ending your day. Now, the worlds you travel are fairly detailed with blistering deserts, murky swamps, and mystical statues jutting from the earth at every turn. I only know that because the game is nice enough to inform you readily of the land you're passing in, thank God it did, because there were some times where I was looking at a space wondering why I couldn't pass through what looked like to be swamp, only to realize it was fathoms deep, dark ocean, ready to swallow my Tom Cruise clone without a second thought. Now, graphically it really does capture you though. When you enter a village or unique location, the backgrounds are suitably atmospheric, and it gives a sense of both character and theme throughout. Your little blotted dudes, sometimes no larger than a couple pixels across all actually have unique character, and after a bit you can identify party members by a couple uniquely placed pixels that mark them as a cook, and not as a cultist, or as a native, and not your batshit insane main leader, or the donkey. Though let's be honest, uh, if it's pixel art and you can't tell it's a fucking donkey, you probably need some kind of surgery. Overall, I'd say excellent for what it does, but even with the scaling options to ease the strain on the eye, you do have to know what you're getting into with these kind of games. It fits, it works, and there are no surprises in that way. But graphically, there were a couple bugs. I have a 980 GTX, and it should be able to run seven copies of this game all at the same time while rendering my entire Jenna Hayes collection, but randomly, and without warning, the game would drop to less than like 10 frames a second like it was testing my own internal fortitude. I never could seem to figure out the issue, and I had to either bear with it until I could save and restart, or just simply restart right away. That is not the best, especially for a system as powerful as mine. Now, sound music and voice. As always, sound is up first, and you know, these guys are going for a particular sound. It's an audio wayback machine that reminds you of games from yesteryear, and that is fine. But I have to say, sometimes when playing the particularly crunchy sound effects, it could become a bit grating on my ears, especially with extended play. I get that the games go for this on purpose, and I totally understand it. It's part of their atmosphere and a great deal of their attempted charm. But at times, it just, it sort of got a little bit frustrating. I would say it was good overall, but... I would have liked it to be a little bit cleaned up. Now when it comes to music, I liked it. Listen, there is not much here, and it plays ambiently in the background, and like the sound effects, it does eschew a complex umbrella of sounds for a few distinct ones, but it works. It just does. It adds to the atmosphere, and it really did remind me of playing games on my old Apple II computer minus the floppy drive tap, 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 tap sound. Now, voice. None, so who gives a shit? Moving on. Gameplay. As a roguelite, you know the game is about death. That's what these games are about, death, and that little bit of life between each sordid animal cruelty-like carnage-filled twisting of your mortal coil. In Curious Expedition, you grab one of a series of adventures and go out and try to become the most and best adventurer of the group, traveling to distant lands, searching them, stealing from them, and promptly dying in them. Now, should you magically return to the land of the living with any remnants of your travels, you can sell them to collect money for your next trip or give them to the museum to gain fame and try to be the best best adventurer of the bunch. And that's the magic, the sheer brilliance that happens between those two moments where Curious Expedition really seems to shine. You see, every leader has bonuses, some useful in only some places, and others always useful but less powerful. And you can also collect an assortment of followers from cultists to cooks to natives to donkeys, each of them offering something useful to the group. However, they are also usually riddled with mental deficits. I mean, this group of travelers, no matter how you pick and who you pick, and how well you do is usually the most motley 
motley crew of adventurers ever. Forget Indiana Jones and instead think of that dude who betrayed him at the start of the last Ark movie who swallowed a spear with his skull. Then fill out your entire party with those same murderers, cheats, cowards, and paranoia riddled characters and you just have a taste of how your party makeup will be. And that is fitting because every step you take while adventuring impacts the most important trait of the game, which is sanity. Fittingly, as Tom Cruise gets older, he goes more and more batshit crazy, hanging from planes in an attempt to fool the world into thinking he is Zanzibar, or whatever the hell that star god thing is he worships. And so do your adventures. Each step you take whittles away at your sanity. That can be temporarily lifted up by fruit, coca leaves, and whiskey, all of which seem to have strange mental effects of their own on the characters. Sleeping in nice places, and sometimes not so nice places, restores sanity. But I tell you this, in the later levels of the adventuring, the game becomes far less about finding the golden pyramid of Mumra the Ever Living, and instead it is about getting somewhere anywhere safe without having your party going mad and running out into the woods to screw a tree trunk to death. But that's what makes Curious Expedition so enjoyable at times to me. It's that interplay of su sanity with travel and with rest and with locations and with the end game itself. It's handled perfectly and it's that mini system within systems that reminds me of other games that do it well like State of Decay. Games where it looks like one thing on the surface but it's the hidden metagame that gets you. In the end, sanity is a resource but so too are the characters themselves. Then there's the balancing act of supplies to help them, but then you need to know when to use them, or do you risk traveling just a bit farther and then going to sleep only to wake up next to a bunch of Miley Cyruses? Luckily, the developers don't just throw you into the woods and cackle at your misfortune. Bartering and trading are vital to outfit your group with the proper supplies like climbing gear, torches, maps, flare guns, and rope. Yeah, rope. You see, I get that the game is a roguelike game, but it seems awfully skewed when you can't buy the basics for your trip sometimes, even if you have the money, because someone, somewhere, decided to make the biggest ball of twine and the world is suffering from a fucking rope shortage. There should be a specific set of always buyable items, because even if you have them, it by no means guarantees you success, but starting out a level with a ton of money and a fucking torch and some chocolate, because no one in Britain was carrying shovels, ropes, or machetes, seems awfully one-sided, especially as all those items are needed to even adventure and travel within the game world. Hey. I get that it's a roguelike game through and through. Life and roulette aren't fair and neither is this, but I really do wish that had been changed. Now, that issue aside, the game is full of surprises with various environmental issues occurring alongside your crazy train of adventures. And the fact that every living beast in the wilds wants to climb inside your flesh coat and show it to their friends. Every animal, no matter how mundane, in the real world is bloodthirsty and ready to kill you at a moment's notice. The battles are handled via a dice roll system with six-sided dice and each character having a special dice for themselves with attack, run, or other kinds of icons on them. It's a fun system in and of itself, but I did find myself getting gutter sniped constantly. Five dudes against a single puma, puma won. Four dudes and a pissed off Harriet Tubman against a silverback gorilla, and the gorilla won. Actually, that one makes sense because gorillas are the Abrams battle tanks of nature. But I think in the end, my battle record was pretty much the opposite of Mike Tyson's boxing record, minus the human eating. Now, fun factor. You know what? I loved it. There are some issues here and there, and there are some issues with roguelike games as a whole when it comes to dying and how they go about it. This game seems to have really handled it well. The additional perks you can get between travels and the new people you unlock just added so much atmosphere to the game and made me keep wanting to play. It felt like one half Jules Verne tale and one half League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the good half, by the way. And as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never talk about it again rating scale. This is a buy. It's coming out in just a couple days. I suggest you check it out. Aside from the occasional starting like issue with the balance and so forth, and the random graphics issue that did crop up a couple times in the game, the fact is... Curious Expedition kept me coming back for more, and I am not a massive roguelike kind of fan. It offers a really unique look into roguelike games that throws off the crust of medieval fantasy and reminds you that imagination is where it's at, and reminds you that it might mean Amelia Earhart didn't die in a plane flight, but instead decided to become an adventurer and strike out into Africa to punch lions in the face because she was such a badass. There's so many cool things about the game and the atmosphere. I really did love it.
Now, let's be honest, guys. If you're not a fan of roguelike games, you may not be into this, but I can say this. If you don't know if you're a fan and you want to check something out that isn't the typical rigmarole of medieval roguelike games, I would at least look at this, check out a couple Let's Plays, check out a couple videos, and see if maybe it's for you. I think these guys really deserve a exceptional amount of praise for what they've got here. So anyway, that's it for me. If you like it, hit like. If you dislike to hit dislike, please check us out on Patreon. If you can help us out, that would be awesome. If not, make sure to spread the word on Twitter, Facebook, wherever else. Peace out.